What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we are showing off a deck that I've done a ton of times on the channel but for some reason completely forgot to do post ban list because there's a card Tanky, that has went to one and it does affect the deck a little bit. So if you guys do enjoy these deck profiles, let me know by liking these videos and subscribing to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. That's all I gotta say. I'm gonna keep it short, keep it sweet. Let's get into the deck profile. Okay, so to get things started off with the main deck here, we are playing, of course, triple comma one, triple comma two, triple comma three, and double Yosendru Sujik. Say it in all my Yosendru videos, I'm gonna say it again. This is is the best Yosenju lineup. Don't change this. This is what you gotta play. I'm telling you, there's nothing that you wanna change. Don't play Izna, don't play any of the new ones. These are the best ones. They synergize with the Kaijus, they synergize with each other, and these are just the best ones to help you win games. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. No argument, that's what it is. I'm being real, like, dead serious with you. When I say I've tested everything, I love Yosenjus. If you guys literally look at my channel, it's a bunch of Yosenju profiles, a bunch of different ways, a bunch of different formats. I'm telling you, this is the best way to play it. So these are the Yosenju lineup. Then we are playing the Triple Gamma Seal and Double Cumungus. Only five Kaijus. I know it's called Yosenju Kaiju, but technically it is just going second Yosenju more than it is just pure Yosenju Kaiju. But the Kaijus, of course, are very important. Going second, they are very good. Now, if you can just out one of your big main opponents, like boss monsters, for example, is one of the big problems that you probably would encounter, then you can probably just go for OTK from there. Like this deck just can beat your opponent so fast. So that's why I really like the Kaijus in here. So of course, we're playing five. And as you guys can see, we're literally just playing every going second card in the game that's really relevant and that can help you OTK. So we are playing Triple Ash, for example, Triple Nibiru. Nibiru synergizes with this deck super, super Super well by the way because even if you end up going like into turns three four five whatever your yosenju monsters always come back to your hand which means that when you use your nibiru you're never really going to be hitting any of your own monsters unless there's like a rare case where you have a phantasm on the field but otherwise it's like really you're never going to be hitting your yosenju monsters with nibiru so nibiru really synergizes with this deck very very well also on top of that it putting a token on your opponent's side of the field can become really really good again once you see something like utopia the double with double or nothing putting that token on their field gives you something to beat them right so you can put, if, if it's not big enough you can put it in attack position and otk them from there so nibiru is really really good on top of that it's just a monster on your side of the field that can help you push for a game as well then you have double phantasmi now this is what i want to talk about this could be changed so you have double phantasmi double bell and double veiler now here is one thing that i want to mention i'll put these phantasmis here okay these four cards over here, now Phantasmate I think is a great card because you lost Tanky now with Tanky going to one at the ban list. So I like Phantasmate a lot because what it does is it fixes your hand. Sometimes, especially in the meta today, if for example you're playing against something like Tri Brigade, right? At one point they're going to have like the Link Monsters on the board, you're going to summon Phantasmate. Now you want to do this before they make Apollo of course because they can Apollo negate your Phantasmate. But the reason you want to make Phantasmate or summon Phantasmate is because one, it gives you an out to Apollo right away because it's going to be 2400 and usually they make three material Apollos, aka it's going to be 2400. So Phantasmin gives you an out to Apollo right away. Two, like I said, it fixes your hand. If you draw something like the double or nothing, and that's a brick, right? If you draw the double or nothing, what you just do instead is you just Phantasmin put it back. It fixes your hands and that's really important. But on top of that, against the meta right now, it just does so much that I think this card is really, really good. And it puts an extra body on your side of the field as well, which is really, really important. Now, I'm going to be honest, Nibiru and Phantasmate don't synergize that well with Lightning Storm. I'll get into that in a minute, but it's still worth playing them because just having them lets you push through a lot of things that your opponent might have. Now, I will say this though, the Phantasmates and the Veilers, you can swap these out. What I would swap them out for if you were to swap them out is uh, the Gammas and the driver so these four cards would go into your main deck over these four cards and that's what you will if you, it's like it depends on your testing and testing honestly like both have been pretty good for me so this is the version that i decided to go with because in my testing this is a version that i felt lurked that actually is funny enough a little bit better however there are a lot of situations where gamma is just really really good as well so you could play gamma instead of these four and then all i would do is take one cowboy out and one lightning out for these two in the extra deck but that's not a big change i just wanted to show you guys that this is just another option that you guys can play, right? So make sure to test out both. I love to give you guys options. I love to give you guys ideas, not like a standalone, this is how to build this. And if you don't play it this way, then you're wrong. It's obviously not the case. I just wanted to give you guys different options. So this is the this is the way that's been working for me really, really good. And so that's why I wanted to show you guys this build. Of course, you're playing triple imperm, one tanky, triple extravagance. It's your only draw power in the deck. So you want to play triple extrav, 
triple lightning storm one harpy's feather duster as well as one double or nothing now like i said lightning storm doesn't synergize that well with phantasme doesn't synergize honestly all that well with nibiru either but the reason you want to play this over something like evenly matched even though that i really like evenly matched and the idea of it is because a lot of the time is you really want to otk your opponent you really want to beat your opponent after you make you you know your opponent makes a combo and then you're gonna break their board once you break the board you really want to be able to otk them the issue is with something like even me is you start to play a grindy game and this deck doesn't really grind that well if that makes sense right because your your central monsters like i said are going to come back to your hand so if you don't have the right hand traps like turns three turns four turn five then your opponent can just either outright otk you or just set up their board again um and then you know just be you from there right so you don't want to grind too much in this deck and that's why again something like lightning storm is really important a lot more than evenly because you don't want to give up your battle phase right so then you're playing one harpy's feather duster of course against the back row and then one double or nothing to help you otk so that's it for the main deck 40 cards in the main deck i think this main deck is really really solid i really really like how this has been playing out for me and testing right now all these hand traps are really really relevant and on top of that because you're playing so many different hand traps you don't really lose something like cross out because unless your opponent like has the cross out called by the graven hand like the, how are they stopping all of these hand traps right and again i really like phantasmi but if you wanted to change the phantasmis and the veilers you could just play the gammas and the driver here instead right so four cards for four cards boom there you go both of them work perfectly fine i just wanted to show you guys a different option now for the extra deck of course you are playing a, like you, we're playing extra right so because you're playing extra you're just maxing out on the cards that you need which are triple utopia triple utopia double these are the ones you really really need then you're playing triple cowboy but like i said if you want to play the gamma package just take out one cowboy to put in the gamma package then you're playing two zeus i know zeus is a little bit expensive even with the megaton reprint this card could be kind of expensive so if you wanted to you could play two zeus you could play one zeus one lightning i like to play two zeus the lightning is not that important if i'm being honest with you like i said like if you take if you put in the gamma package right and you want to put these two in i would take these two out and then put these two in right that's that's what i wanted to show you guys but this is just an option that if you are not playing the gamma package this is how i like to play it now I love playing Cowboy in this deck because Cowboy, to be honest with you, helps you just like OTK and beat your opponent sometimes in so many different ways. So what a lot of people don't like realize sometimes with this deck, especially going up against this deck, is that if you put up four Yosenju monsters, so like even if you put up like three or four Yosenju monsters, let's say you put one comma one, one comma two, one comma three, and a Sujik, right? Just one of each, right? Or you could even put up like two comma ones, a comma two, and a comma three. It doesn't really matter. But if you put up four Yosenjus, you're doing so much damage to your opponent that a lot of the time, just making a cowboy at the end of all that battle damage, you're winning the game. I know cowboy for game sounds meme, but it's it's really true. Cowboy for game is a very real thing in this deck. So that's why I like to play cowboy. Then I'm playing one pentastag. It's just one of those things that sometimes you can go into to help you just like OTK through uh, if your opponent has a monster in defense position. That happens sometimes because they're not always going to have something in attack position for Utopia the double. So if you can make a pentastag before that, it's really, really good. Then you have Lambda, of course. I'm just playing Lambda as a generic link too that you can make. You don't need to play Lambda. Honestly, like Lambda was more in here for the Gamma package as well. So like if you have to play the Gamma package, the Lambda is just better. If not, you'd like this is just an extra link too that you could make. This could also be Baguska that you can play. I just wanted to give you guys another option. Baguska, you guys can play any other rank 4. Tornado Dragons, another good one as well that you can make. So just different options. And then one Boral Sword. Like I said, sometimes you do have something like an Ibiru on the board. And if you have four Yosendris in hand with the Nibiru on the board, you can just make Boral Sword with Nibiru and that's just going to hit them for game, right? So Boral Sword sometimes comes up. But again, this is just more fodder for extravagance. You just really want to keep these in your extra deck. And as long as you have Utopia Double and Utopia, you're pretty much going to beat your opponent. Now, I didn't want to leave you guys with just that 40 card deck profile. I wanted to show you guys a quick kind of what this deck can do and show you guys how it works. So here we're going to let this play out. We're playing against Dragoonid here. This is just one of the test matches I was actually doing just before I filmed this video. And so here I'm just going to ash the cards of consonants. I knew he would probably have more extenders, but cards of consonants having two extra cards in his hand is kind of insane. So here I'm just going to let him do whatever he wants, right? We don't have any more hand traps outside of the Nibiru here. This is what I mean by Nibiru where synergizes so well with this deck. So you're going to see he's going to go off. I'm going to let everything happen. It doesn't really matter for me. And I'm going to wait till he has no more extenders to activate the Nibiru. So at this point, like here, like I'm going to hold the Nibiru until he runs out of extenders. So at this point, he's only summoned once. So obviously we can't Nibiru here. But you're going to see he's going to summon two times, three, four. Now he's going to, I think, I think his fifth one is going to be the um, Romulus. Yeah, so here goes four, five is Romulus. And so here, instead of going the Bureau here, I was like, maybe he'll have extenders. So let's just let him go through all his extenders. And then once he goes through his extenders, then um, we'll Nibiru. So of course, everything's just going off here. He's going to activate his Glow. Glow is going to search him into this. Okay, so here, I know he has the Ravine in hand, and this is the only other card. He can't activate Ravine anymore, and I see that he has no real extenders. He's already used Zephyros, so he has no real extenders in his graveyard either. So I was like, all right, 
I am at this point going to Nibiru. Also, what happens is the reason I want Nibiru here as well, just so you guys know, so he can't glow in the graveyard as well, so he can't do that. So now I'm putting this in attack position, and he's just gonna pass, right? Here is why this deck. So, so I drew a Kaiju, which even if he kept going, I still have the Kaiju for it. But watch, you just go Utopia the double, and this is literally what the deck does. You go Utopia, and then my opponent quit here, right? So I just wanted to show you guys that real quickly. All you have to do really is one Nibiru, and then if you had a Kaiju, even if I didn't have a Nibiru, let's say, let's say I had a different hand shot, let's say I had a Phantasme, and like here I drew into the Kaiju, like you just Kaiju's end board, doesn't matter what it is. Once you Kaiju, you just make Utopia double and you're OTKing him. That's really how the deck runs. So that is it for today's deck profile. I hope you guys did enjoy. Now in the deck profile, as you guys saw, I did show you guys some other options that you can play, some different ways you can play the deck, and I showed you a little like play test of how the deck runs. So hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you guys do have any other suggestions though, let me know in the comment section down below. I always love to hear what people have to say, what you guys think, because at the end of the day, Spanko is a community. We all get better, we all grow together. So let's make it happen. Thank you guys all for watching, like I said. And with that, Spanko sign out. Peace.